Hi, I'm Melissa Nielsen, and this week we're going to talk about moving. So it's a hot requested topic, which is really funny. Um, I'm often amazed when people ask me, hey, will you do a video on this? I go, really? But this is something that I've done a lot, done a lot of moving, and somebody might frown on that. But, you know, I was an army brat, so we moved a lot as a child, and I really generally don't let grass grow under my feet too long. Um, and maybe it's because I haven't found the forever home. But I think one thing that's interesting, and I sort of had this conversation with my um, one of my adult sons the other day, you know, it's not like 50, 60 years ago when dad went off to work for the same company for 40 years and you lived in the same house beginning to end. That era is kind of gone. And so I think it's okay to release yourself and not be so stressed out about the fact that maybe you've moved a time or two or 10 or 12. Um, one thing that we've always thought is when we move, we've always wanted to go someplace better. Like it's, we're always making a step up. And um, with that, sometimes there are sacrifices that have to happen. And, um, and we try to minimize those sacrifices at all, when at all possible on children and try to keep up with relationships that maybe they had made that they weren't ready to walk away from. We, as of the recording of this, we're getting ready to leave San Diego, which I have to tell you has been very interesting. We moved here um, just over six years ago, almost seven years ago, and leaving here is going to be very hard, very hard. Um, in the respect that I worked really hard to get our family here. Eric and I busted our bums and worked really hard and leaving here is, is hard, especially for the reasons that we're leaving. And, um, and I, I think that, you know, if you're of a temperament that has trouble making decisions, maybe you're phlegmatic or melancholy and you're really worried a lot about, um, you know, how this is going to work for your children and you're stressing about that. I would say one of the things that has helped us immensely in this move was I was in prayer and meditation and just said, if this is right, please help it be smooth. Please help it minimize the pain, the emotional pain that it might have on, on us. And please help us to be very excited about where we're going. And guess what? When you ask, you often receive. So um, while it will be hard to leave here, we understand why we're leaving. And we um, are making choices that are better for our family and our children understand, even though they're young. The emotional parts of moving, because it is emotional. It is sometimes heart-wrenching. It is sometimes frustrating. And, and you have to keep that in mind when you're going forward into the spaces that I'm going to talk to you next about planning and being organized with regards to how you're executing your move. Be aware that your children are going to be struggling. Be aware that you and your partner, if you love where you are, that you it's going to be hard to leave. So honor those, honor those emotions, talk about those emotions, and, and be okay to sit with them. Um, it is a little bit like a death or a divorce and you're going to have a mourning period, especially if you really like where you are. And it, it's not going to be super easy, but you can make it easier. Um, the things that we have done to make it easier, we have made sure that the things that we can absolutely do, even though we're still in lockdown in California, we're doing them. We're doing the things that we know we'll miss. We're going to restaurants that we know will, even though it's on, it's takeout, we're going to those restaurants and we're enjoying them and supporting them and doing what we can to support those, those businesses. We are spending as much time as possible connecting with friends, even though we can't actually be face to face with them in many um, situations. We um, made things like I made a bunch of lanterns, um, little glass lanterns from jars that we're delivering to friends as we leave so that when they light that candle, and we light our candle, we can all be in the same place. So um, we, we wanted to really look at ways to make leaving not be so hard. So with that, that piece of organization, um, you know, I've made moves that I've had three months to plan, and I've made moves um, that I've had 20 days to plan. And truly, they're not a whole lot different. Because what happens when you have a lot of time to plan is you don't do anything until seriously like the last minute right so you really want to just have a good plan in place and I truly believe you can move in 20 days if you need to in our case what we've done 
because we're not exactly sure where we're going to land yet. We're putting everything in storage and then we'll come back for it. Um, in moves past, we've chose a, a place in our home, in the garage, someplace that's a staging area. That staging area gets all the boxes, all the things that are be ready to pack up. And in the weeks before your move, you wanna start pulling those things out that you know you're not going to need. Um, so, you know, for the last two weeks, I've had a bag of school supplies that I know I'm going to need while we're gone. Those have been set aside and everything else has been packed up. Um, the same with like with your food, because we're not, we're not taking any food with us um, that we're, you know, we, we have to get rid of everything since everything's in storage and we're just going to be in our car. So this week's menu, as we're getting ready to leave in like six days from the filming of this, um, I'm filming this on May 11th. Um, we're not taking any food with us. So this week's menu is going to be using everything that's in my fridge and freezer so that there's um, minimal waste and whatever is left, I'll give to somebody. So you want to have a plan in place. We also sat down, Eric and I, um, like 20 days out. Actually, when we gave our 30-day notice, we did this. So, um, so on April 15th, when we gave our 30-day notice to our landlord, we also got, that's when we got the storage unit. We sat down and, and portioned out what had to happen each week to get us where we are right now. So I wanted to have taxes done and all the finances stuff because we didn't know how long we would be in the, the nowhere is what Soraya calls it, the nowhere. I, so I wanted to have that done. There were some other financial pieces we needed to get done. There were um, some work projects that needed to get done. So we looked at the next month ahead and we portioned all of that out and worked together to get it done. Now we're in the last week and we have every single day planned out. We know what day the truck is coming. We know what we're doing each day to get there. So like for instance, today, my job today was to film um, hopefully 20 videos, probably not going to get all 20 done, but my job today was to get a bunch of videos filmed so that we could have um, not stress while we're, while we're traveling, so that we have content, that it's, it's going to be available to our, our viewers, our audience, and, and we can still um, do the things we need to do um, for our move. Tomorrow, my mending pile needs to get um, completely done. I'm not taking stuff that is, like I have weird have weirdness when it comes to taking broken things and taking things that need to be mended, things that don't have pairs, that kind of thing stresses me out. I know I'm a little strange. So my mending pile is getting gone through tomorrow. Um, there's a couple of sewing projects that we're trying to finish up. Those will get done tomorrow. And my kitchen will get packed tomorrow. On Monday, we're having sort of an open house space for people who feel comfortable coming by to say goodbye to us on Monday. And I'll probably get some packing done too. I packed my office last week. So I keep turning to look at this bookcase and pull something off there and there's nothing there. Um, so things are, we've systematically decided what needed to be packed first and we had a, have had a really good plan. So we, um, we bit the bullet this time and hired a housekeeper um, that came she came on um, she came on when what's today today Saturday she came on Wednesday and she cleaned our house took her nine hours best 300 bucks I ever spent honestly because think about how long it takes you to clean your house when you're moving out I wanted to not have that that stress and that worry so went ahead and did that so now all we have is the minimal stuff so once the truck takes the things on Wednesday um, it'll take it to the storage unit and then Thursday we'll clean the house and Friday we'll leave here so if that's not your reality if you know you like have to load the truck and and then do the cleaning because you're moving out of state or what have you um, I would look at getting the truck for an extra day if possible if you can afford that so that you can have all your goods on the truck parked in your driveway and then you can clean the house and then you can be gone. So really think about that organizational piece. Um, I think the fact that we've moved many times has helped a lot. I kind of know what I'm doing. One other thing that I did this time that I haven't done in times past is I purchased boxes. Now, you know, you might be thinking, Melissa, that's a crazy expense. It's really not. We don't have that much stuff. So keep in mind, we, we moved here seven years ago with a 10 foot truck and four out of five kids and a cat. And each kid had three boxes. 
because that was we were we were downsizing. We downsized a lot when we left Utah. Um, so when we left that, we we vowed we weren't going to sort of explode and have a whole lot of stuff. So if you've got to do purging, do purging. We did that the very first week. We did a ton of purging. Went through our closets. Went through things that we know we needed to get rid of. And um, sort of during this lockdown, um, the normal place that we go has not been open, but we found that the Salvation Army has somebody out there every day um, manning their, um, because the homeless people that need to come and get things, so they have um, a collection every day, so we've been going and donating things there. So going through that purging piece, um, I think is really important. I did not want to take anything with me that I wasn't going to love when we got to the other side. So um, ask yourself those questions, and those are tough questions for sure. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, we did all the purging. Um, so now, like, oh, I said I bought boxes. So truly, I have spent less than $50 on all the boxes that we purchased to pack up our house. We've been very mindful about how we're packing and what we're packing. The children have been allowed to pack some of their own boxes, but I have the tape. So I have the approval over what goes in that box at the end. And um, often children will pack two things and then think that that's, that's enough. And so we have to go back and sort of help them with that. So um, those are really my tips. I hope that helps. I have packed a house with a tiny baby before um, in tow, and you really just need to plan. You need to plan to have people help you where possible. You and your partner need to be on the same page and really get those plans in place. So I hope that was helpful. Happy moving to you if you're also moving, and we'll see you later.